Well, howdy there, Internet people. It's Bo again. So today we are going to talk about the electoral process in the United States, how some people would like to change it, and I'm going to answer like 300 messages all at once because I have gotten just tons and tons of messages asking me to talk about a specific candidate who is running with a party that is not Republican or not Democrat. Okay, bunch of different candidates, but it's all basically talk about my candidate who is running for president on a third party ticket. Um, I talk about third party candidates closer to the elections, generally speaking. Um, when it comes to a third party candidate for president, I hope that most people know that it's messaging. It, that's what it is. It, it's trying to carry an idea forward. Um, it, it's not actually about winning. And I know that there are a lot of people who say, you know, the only reason that's true, the only reason a third party candidate can't win is because people like you say that they can't win so nobody votes for them. We're going to skip over the likelihood of a third party candidate winning the presidency. Okay? We're just going to jump over the fact that it's less than a 1% chance. Okay? We're going to say your candidate, whoever your candidate is, they won the presidency. How? Doesn't matter. Magic. Okay? Not just did they win, they won in a landslide. Okay? Now what? Now what? What are they going to do? The United States government is set up with three allegedly co-equal branches of government. The president from a third party, your candidate, they are going to be able to sign or veto legislation proposed by the two other parties. That's what they're going to be able to do. Um, and most people who don't view third party candidates as just a messenger for an idea to get an idea attention, but really want them to win, they do so not out of philosophical reasons, but out of cynical ones. You know, these are very much people who oftentimes say things like, you know, two wings of the same bird, two sides of the same coin type of thing. And this is what drove them to look at third party candidates to begin with. If that assumption is true, what do you think the uh, people in Congress are going to do? Let's say your candidate vetoes something. You'll see a bipartisan effort to overturn it, right? They can't do anything as president. Sure, they can maybe change U.S. foreign policy a little bit. What would really happen? Boomerang effect. Just like with Trump trying to undermine NATO. What happened as soon as the next person got in? NATO is stronger than it has ever been. They can use executive orders. Yeah, I mean, they can, the same as any other president, but it's not going to be transformative. The courts, which are full of people appointed by the two other parties, will strike it down. I mean, let's be clear, the Supreme Court wouldn't let student debt relief stand. Your candidate is not going to executive order in the revolution. It's not going to happen. They're going to coalition build and, and get support in Congress. No, they're not. Um, a third party is a threat to the power structures that exist, the Democratic and Republican parties. They're not going to help them succeed. You end up with a four-year lame duck. That's the real problem. 
with people taking it seriously. Now, those people who are who support third party candidates to message, that's an entirely different thing. Okay, or if there is that rare candidate that actually philosophically aligns with you, I mean, I those two I can kind of understand. Um, but thinking that a third party candidate running for president is going to fundamentally alter the way the United States works or they're going to be able to accomplish much of anything at all, it's just denial of reality. It's just not how the country is set up. Um, a savior is not coming to, to fix the United States. It's not going to happen. So, if you really don't like, for most people watching this channel, the Democratic Party, what might you do? If you want to run a president on a third party candidate, you have to start from the bottom. County Commission, City Council, School Board, State Representatives, House of Representatives, Senate. If your candidate does not have allies, and a lot of them, up on Capitol Hill, your presidential candidate doesn't mean anything. Because even if they were to win, they can't get anything done. You have to start at the bottom and you have to build it up. Yeah, it would take a really long time. Decades. Decades. But that's... If you want deep systemic change, you have to build it. The system that exists is not going to allow it. The system that exists wants to maintain the system that exists because it benefits them. So you have that as an option. The other option would be to get involved with the Democratic Party at the local level. County commission, city council, school board, state reps. Use the primary system and work your way up. When people say this, and say, you know, you can push more progressive candidates. Well, the response is often that, well, the Democratic establishment won't allow it. And that's what people say. But what I hear is people saying, the people with the Tea Party, they were like way better than us. The Tea Party did it. They started at the bottom. And, yeah, the Tea Party in name didn't really get anywhere, but the Tea Party gave us MAGA. The Tea Party gave us MAGA. And that's how long it takes to shift a major political party like that. Um, MAGA has its roots in the Tea Party, in that movement. And that desire to shift to the Republican Party, it led directly to Trump and all of that stuff. It, it, it is completely possible. The Democratic Party is actually a little bit more flexible than the Republican Party. Not much, but a little bit. Um, so you have that as an option. And I know, because I said that, somebody's going to say, look... Here he is saying to go back to the establishment. No, I'm going to say the same thing I've been saying since all of this started. The real solution is to build a power structure outside of political parties at the local geographic level. That's where it starts. Because if you do that, if you build a community network like that, you can use it to swing a Democratic primary because you have a voting base. You can use it to swing a Democratic primary to a more progressive candidate. And then the people in your network, they could vote for the third party. You have more power that way. Um, you will not usher in some glorious revolution, you will not get deep systemic change by recreating the exact same system that brought us here. It takes work and you have to build it. 
there's no savior. A, a presidential candidate for a third party, even in the super unlikely event that they win, they're not going to be able to do what you want them to do. The, the real solution is to build your own power structure that isn't linked to a political party, that, that's really about helping those people in that community. That will help determine any electoral politics that get applied because the people in that network or from that community, they know the issues that that community is facing and they know who would best address them. The reason I don't talk a lot about third parties outside of their general message or in the rare occasions where you find people who literally cannot vote for either party, like last time, you had a whole bunch of people who in the Republican Party who were like, I cannot vote for Trump again and I will never vote for a Democrat. Well, let me introduce you to the Libertarian Party. Um, that's that's when it gets brought up. We'll talk about the message and stuff like that as it gets closer, as that message gets out. But when you're looking at a third party and you're trying to evaluate it, if it's not running, if it's not running senatorial candidates, if it's not trying to put people in the House of Representatives, if you don't have somebody locally as part of that party on the ballot somewhere, even in the really unlikely event that they win, they're not going to have it. They're not going to have any power. At the end of the day, the occupant of the White House, kind of their entire job is to decide whether or not to let Congress have their way without a fight. You have to have the allies up on Capitol Hill or the agenda that your third party candidate is saying they would have, it, it'll never make it out of the folder. Anyway, it's just a thought. Y'all have a good day.